All right. Uh, Pac-12 Media Days uh, just uh, concluded a few days ago. We want to catch up with uh, Tony Siracusa. You can catch his work on Last Word on College Football. So we've got to Washington coming out of the North Division last year. Uh, USC acclaimed as the best team in the South but did not win the division. Of course, that went to Colorado. But the Trojans, most uh, observers think, were the best team in, in the uh, conference last year. And uh, no surprise, Tony, that the media really likes the Huskies and the Trojans uh, in those uh, specific divisions. Right. The, the, the media the media vote picked Washington to win the Pac-12 North, USC to win the Pac-12 South, which, again, even with uh, you know the loss of some significant talent at USC and a Dory Jackson and Juju Smith-Schuster, you've got a Heisman caliber uh quarterback, Heisman candidate caliber quarterback and Sam Darnold at USC. So a lot of it has to do with that. Uh, so USC got 28 uh, of the votes for first place to win the Pac-12. Uh, Washington got 22. So they came, they're, they're picked to come in second overall in the conference. Not much of a surprise. Um, Utah was picked to finish second in the Pac-12 South, which is a little bit of a surprise because, you know, they lost 16 players out of, out of their starting lineup from last year. But, um, you know, there, there's a belief that Kyle Whittingham has really put his stamp on, on the program after several years there. And they've got a toughness that, that is really impactful in, in the South. UCLA was picked to finish third. Uh, it's Washington and Stanford and Washington State in that order and the Pac-12 North as far as the media is concerned. So, you know, the, the North, of course, is always going to be difficult because, you know, you throw in Oregon in there and they've got new coach Willie Taggart. And when Stanford, uh, during the actual media conference, when David Shaw was asked about the Pac-12 and the Pac-12 North, of course, he's got to play USC every year and UCLA every year. Those are annual crossover games with the South. And then he's got Washington State and Oregon and Washington up there. He was like, this is this is a brutal schedule every year, but that's just the way it is. He said there are no off weeks in the Pac-12. And um, so the Pac-12 North, I think, is going to be a lot of fun to watch. Washington State, you mentioned Dan, uh, Luke Falk, um, you know, with his 60 passes a game. And Mike Leach said he may ask him to throw even more this year. He said Falk has matured. He gets it. The thing he liked about Falk was he said he goes in and has all this ability, and he's very analytical about the game, and he's very calm. He said you never see the kid get rattled. So I never worry about how much I ask out of him for one particular game. Uh, he was asked if they might have more of a running game, and he said, sure, we might run the ball 15 times a game instead of 12. You know, but the the you know for Washington State, it's going to fall on Luke Falk's shoulders. Uh, Washington lost a lot. They lost, you know, they lost a lot of talent with John Ross, Buda Baker. I mean, they lost five significant players to the NFL. But you have Jake Browning back at quarterback, and so there's a lot of faith uh, up in Seattle that that's good enough. Browning even said himself, in the Pac-12, if you have a veteran returning quarterback, you are going to be competitive for the conference championship every year. You know, Tony, I think uh, something that you said just a few minutes ago rings true in that uh, it was just a couple of years ago. It seems like forever because things move so quickly uh, in this industry and covering college football that the Pac-12 was arguably the best conference in college football. The SEC still had that unofficial title, but people were starting to question as to whether maybe the Pac-12 has uh, reached or succeeded the SEC, and that was just a couple seasons ago. Now we've had a couple championship game appearances out of Clemson and some perceived emergence from the Big Ten, and the Pac-12 has been pushed to the side as probably the fourth best conference in college football. But I see no Kansas, I see no Purdue, and we could go down the line with other teams and other conferences. Uh, that in the past has been Oregon State, but the Beavers are much improved and pretty Absolutely. competent uh, coming off a 5-7 and seven campaign. And maybe Arizona is the worst team in the conference, but certainly I would not be surprised if Rich Rod is able to bring them back to uh, – bowl consideration uh, this season. So it's a very balanced conference and has always, meaning in, in recent memory, been the most balanced conference uh, from my vantage point. Yeah, I think that's true. You know, you mentioned Arizona and I agree right now they're the weak link, but even they're going to have an interesting season. Rich Rod pointed out that he has 
uh, upwards of 40 new players on the roster this year because some players left, some players graduated, some players are in the NFL, and some players were told, you know what, there's probably not a great future for you here. Uh, he was upset last year that the players and the schemes, uh, particularly on defense, did not blend well. Now, you're, you know, I would argue a complete roster overhaul probably isn't the best solution to that. Uh, but he did bring in a new defensive coordinator, and he does have a lot of new players, and and he's looking to compete every week. And um, you know, there are, and then there's a there's a lot of talent at the top end. There's a lot of individual talent with some of the names that we've mentioned already, and Josh Rosen at UCLA. You know, we're 15 minutes into the conversation and didn't even mention, you know, a guy who two years ago was all the talk of the Pac-12. Um, so there, there's it's very talent heavy at skill positions. And then you have teams at the bottom, like an Oregon State, like an Arizona, that are really trying to rebuild from a physical standpoint. So I would agree there's a lot of top to bottom balance. The ACC was the best uh, conference, in my opinion, at the quarterback position last year, but most of those guys have moved on, and I don't think I would be shocked if if I'm not making the statement in December that the Pac-12 uh, has the best quarterback play because I don't think there's any question that no league can match the top three or four passers uh, that the Pac-12 will put out uh, in week one, and hopefully Josh Rosen and the rest of the crew will stay healthy uh, through week 12. Right. All right. Uh, yeah. Tony Syracuse, please join him and his colleagues. Their last word on college football certainly have done a great job uh, providing a lot of uh, content and contribution for me. So, Tony, we appreciate the time. Always glad to do it, Mark.